Well, hello, my friends. How are you? Welcome to Thriller Thursday. <laughs> anyway, so today, well, first of all, before I go any further, I want to introduce Wincing Winnie. And if you have not seen his video yet, I will put it in the description below so you can see his scary video. Now, Winnie, he, he moves and I filmed it so if you watch it you're gonna see him move okay so I'm gonna put that link down below and before we get started please make sure that um, if you like my videos or you like my energy or you want to be supportive please click that subscribe hit likes because the algorithms work better and people can find me better when there's likes and um, ring the bell so you know when I when I post or upload a new video I should say so anyway I thought I would talk about my haunted story and I'm calling it my haunted house on Bainbridge Street and this house was really creepy and this um, I feel like the house was kind of like cursed almost you know I it was in West Covina and um, I never felt safe in that house and even before what I'm gonna tell you happen happen um, I just never felt safe in that house um, and so one of the things that happened this is the first instance before the big thing happened so oftentimes in the house um, we had a really long hallway where all the doors were off and it was really kind of a scary uh, hallway because it'd be really dark and then there's all these different offshoots of doors and if you're you know kind of scared then it's terrifying to walk down especially mine my room was shared with my one of my sisters at the very end which meant that I had to walk by all these dark doors and in a dark hallway and I don't know for some reason I'm I think that the light switch may have been like somewhere in the middle or something. Um, I can't remember why, like you would probably be thinking, why didn't you just flip the switch, turn the light on? Because most hallways there's a light switch, but I think in that one in particular, you had to go through three quarters of it before you could turn it on. So it just made you go through a dark hallway, which was really terrifying to me. And um, so, I remember times where I would walk past my first, the first door was my mom's on the left. And I remember going by, and I don't know how to explain this feeling. Um, I don't know if other people get this or if this is part of my makeup being, you know, someone who is, can communicate with spirits or not. I don't know that other people get these same types of uh, sensations, but. I remember going past that door and just feeling a vibration almost like this zzz, and it was kind of like telling me that there was not good energy in that room and I didn't always feel that way but when I walked by at that particular time I got that sensation and I was so like I just my whole body just went cold but I kept going and I never, you know, I never looked into anything more about that. I just kept walking and down to the hall and like I would do a million times, you know, a normal pattern uh, behavior <clears throat> of going to your room and doing whatever you do in your room. Um, but I do remember that. So there's like a bunch of little things that happened in that house that just were very uncomfortable that kind of led up to why I think that house was just kind of cursed. Um, Another time, um, I remember my cousins and my aunt and uncle, they, they, we always had all our parties over at their house and there was like a million kids and um, they would group the birthdays together. And so like, you know, all the Augusts would be together and all the, because there just were too many damn kids <laughs> to be having individual birthdays and stuff like that. So we just grouped them all together, like each, whatever months, I don't even remember, but they would group them together. So, um, I remember, 
we would always walk there, right? Because it was literally right around the corner. And I just, at a certain point, you know, the birthday, I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to be around all these people anymore. And it was loud. It was always so loud. And I don't know how old I was at this time, but pro at least, at least 10, at least. Um, and it was pretty common back in those days that kids would just kind of wander <laughs> around. Like, it wasn't like today where it's like, oh, no kids, you know, beyond this age. Everyone was kind of latchkey kids and the kids were kind of independent. We were, we were latchkey kids too. So we would just see ourselves home. Even when we were underage, we would get home and just lock us ourselves in. Well, supposedly, but you know, at the time we didn't really lock our doors either, which was really stupid and that's going to come up later. Um, so I remember, oh, and I think my, I knew my older sister was home and that's why I felt okay going home because I didn't want to be there anymore, but my older sister was there. And so I thought, oh, I'm just going to go home and be with my older sister. It'll be okay to go to the house by myself. So I walked over to the house and the way the house was set up is that on, from facing the house on the left hand side of the house. There's all these windows, right? The, the house had more windows than any house I'd ever known. I mean, literally later when I was trying to get away from windows, it was almost impossible to put my back somewhere that did not have a window, which is really terrifying when you're terrified of like someone stabbing you or something and there's no, almost nowhere to turn unless you stand in the middle of a room. So and that's just my memory of that house is just like windows everywhere everywhere so i i went home and facing the front of the house on the left hand side my sister had the corner left hand room and she there was like a, a little what do you call those shelving around so hers was the corner so it was like this right a corner and then there was shelving that kind of went around like an L. So half of the shelving around her windows was on the side and then the front shelving. And so I thinking I'm going to be funny and scare my sister. I was going to run up to her window and I was going to knock really hard on it, you know, and freak her out. So I went and I kind of sneakily ran up to the window and I thought I'm not going to knock on the, the front window. Uh Oh, rough, rough. I'm not going <laughs> to, oops, <laughs> I'm not going right, to knock on the front of the window. I'm going to knock on the side because her instinct would be to pull the front one open, right? So as I'm running up and I'm sneakily running up and I have my little thought, I'm going to run up and I'm going to knock really hard on the side of the house window. When I did that, there was a guy, no joke, on his knees on that ledge looking into her window and he was pressing his face into the window. He was frozen too, like he just realized somebody ran up and caught what he was doing. And I was st stunned. Like I had never even thought that that was a possibility, right? To see somebody, to see somebody do that which we now, I now know is called a peeping Tom, right? I had no idea about that. So I just remember going like this and, oh my God, what, you know, what? And I didn't say, I mean, I was stunned into silence and obviously this person was too because they got caught. And so all I remember is I just started backing away. I, I backed away really slow and then I just remember running into the house. And now I'm having a mem another memory that my stepdad was home. He was there too. So my sister and my stepdad were there. So I remember just backing up really slowly because I was terrified and I ran straight to the front door into the house and I'm screaming, you know, to, for my dad, there's, you know, there, there's a guy who's on the ledge and he's like, wait, wait, what? And I'm like, there's a guy out there and he's on the ledge looking into my sister's room. And he just ran out there. But of course the, the peeping Tom had already taken off. So that was like the first instance in that house of something just really, you know, it's criminal, right? It's criminal behavior. Have It was almost like criminals were drawn to that house. The energy, for some reason, it was a pretty little house too. I mean, it was good, but there was always bad things happening. Like I remember one time my neighbor across the street, the inside of his car being on fire 
Um, you know, I remember, oh God, there's just other things I don't even want to talk about that I remember in that neighborhood. And it was a nice neighborhood and working, hardworking people until the lights went down. And that's when it seemed like the criminal element came out. Um, and it was just a really freaky time. And then there was another time where I remember me and my sister were in the room. Now, again, we're, our bedroom is in, like, so here was my sister's room. Here was my sister's room and this was the front of the house. Okay, and then the hallway inside the house and then our room directly across from it. Hers had a ton of side windows and then there was a fence where the hallway was on the side that cut it off, right? And then there was windows all the way around in our bedroom too, this way and then in the back of the house. But the window and the, the side of the house, it was a floor to ceiling window. It was huge, right? And we didn't have like those kind of blinds and stuff like that. Back in the day, you know, curtains were handmade and you know, my mom made curtains and they were kind of sheer. So it was more like to be pretty, not necessarily like keep people from looking into your windows. And so we were in, you know, I just remember being in there and, you know, actually was, I took a shower and I remember coming in and I, and the radio was on. This is when we had like a little ghetto blaster. And so I had left it with music on, took a shower and came back in. I had my towel wrapped around me and I, I walked into the room and I'm hearing music, but I'm hearing some other sound and I couldn't place like, what is that sound? And then that feeling came over me again that and i just felt cold and i i just acted like nothing right because i'm like i had this sense that somebody was watching me and so i thought i'm just going to act really normal but then in the course of like acting like i'm going into my dresser i'm going to turn the volume down really fast and see what happens and look at the window and right when I did that, you heard leaves crunching, like somebody was running and probably hopped the fence, you know, over to get out of there. So again, that was like the second time that I caught a peeping Tom. There was another time that was so freaky in our family room. And the family room was like an add-on room, but it was very, I don't know, hardwood and, and it had a bar and there was like a really terrifying painting in there of like you know those old castle paintings of like knights but you could see their face and they're hard and it's like all these shadows and they used all these black and gray colors and it's just a scary scary picture which i wish i had now because <laughs> i like that kind of thing it's fun um but at the time, you know, going through a lot of stuff in that house, it was kind of terrifying. And that, that picture was like behind our bar area. So it was, it felt like in that house, there was a lot of areas where people could just hide, right? Like there was all these little kind of twists and turns and things that went off or furniture that allowed someone to hide if they wanted to, or, you know, it, I was always terrified. So I would go in that room and I would always kind of like look behind the bar before I sat down to feel comfortable because it just felt, the house always felt scary to me. And um, I just always felt uncomfortable being in that house, like someone was always watching. And so in the living room, it happened again, where I remember we were sitting in the living room and we were all kind of facing the TV and over up here, which again was on the window up high that was on the side of the house. I look, you know, I feel this feeling again. And then I look over to the window up at the top and I just see a guy's face like this. And then it's just like, so he was like this and then it just went like this. <laughs> it was so terrifying. I don't even remember now what what I did at that one because I mean, I don't know if I even said anything or I can't remember because there's so many little things with that house. But um, there was another time when I was in the shower and um, when I got in the shower, you know, people were home. And then when I was like almost done in the shower, I got that weird feeling again. And so I hurried up and I got out of the shower and put my towel on because it just, something felt wrong. And 
I put my towel on and I just remember yelling out to see if anyone is home. Like, hello, is anyone home? Nothing. So in the process of me taking a shower, and mind you, I'm young. I mean, I'm between 10 and 12 during this time. Everyone who was home left and didn't tell me and just left me alone in that house. So, you know, I, it just was crazy. And that's not uncommon for like siblings to do because they're not thinking about, you know, Ooh, you know, I'm going to tell my sister where I'm going, you know, like, you know, parents expected at that time for all the siblings to look after each other, you know, and, and so siblings sometimes they don't care, you know. So anyway, um, I just remember being alone in that house and, you know, being terrified. And I remember like I just went and got a knife and I'm thinking like, where can I sit with this knife until someone comes home to feel comfortable, like to feel safe? Cause I'm terrified right now that somebody is in this house and I wasn't gonna go in that long dark hallway and put myself at risk there. So the, I mean, literally even in every single room had wall to wall windows. So the only place that I could sit was there was the kitchen and it had a bar and then there was the dining room table and it had a sliding glass door. And there was like right in that little corner between the bar and the sliding glass door, there was just a tiny bit of wall that I could just sit there. And so I remember sitting on the bar stool like this with my, with a butcher knife and just waiting because then right across from the dining room was the haunted um, family room where I saw that guy do that. It was just freaky. So I remember, you know, and then when my mom's car or my stepdad's car came up, you know, I just remember hearing a car come up into the driveway and then I just put the knife back away. So nobody ever knew, like, no one ever knew what happened or that I was terrified like that. So it was a really scary house. So anyway, if you are liking my, my, uh, Thriller Thursday, you know, haunted stories, please consider liking and subscribing and hitting the bell so you know when I upload more. Um, I also want to, I think I was planning on telling you all of it, but then the more that I'm like talking, the more I realize, God, there's a lot of stuff that happened in that house. So the main thing that I wanted to tell you about that house, I'm going to save for part two of my haunted house on Bainbridge Street. I will save that for the next one. And that one was like, ooh, that was a big story that I'm going to tell you next time. So anyway, thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Also, I wanted to share one other thing with you. So over here, I want to introduce you to these guys. Okay, so this is Wincing Winnie right here. And I'm going to put a link in the... Um, in the description so that you can watch Winnie's scary, uh, scary video clip. And I also want to introduce you to Scully Dan, Scully Dan right here. Scully Dan is actually 65 years old. Can you believe that? I'm going to, I'm going to hold him really quick because I want to bring him down with me. So check out Scully Dan. He is amazing, and this is actually a family heirloom of mine. So say hi, Scully Den. Ahoy, matey! <laughs> Scully Dan's a pirate. I like Scully Dan. Anyway, he's 65 years old, and he is a family heirloom. My dad made this uh, when he was a boy, and I inherited this and this my dad's an artist just like I am and so I just think it's really it's really interesting you know to see look at this and this amazing and this is one of the first things that he made when he was younger and this is made out of paper mache and I just think it's awesome I think you're awesome Scully Dan I don't know how to speak pirate speak to say thank you but he thanks me Arr.